Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and I think that defending pretentiousness is stupid. Here's why. So a friend of mine sent me this video called Why You Should Be More Pretentious. It's by a channel called Horses, and, <laughs> well, let's just say it, it, it does look like the kind of channel that would say pretentiousness is good, actually. For most people, pretentious falls under the category of you know it when you see it. it. Kind of floats around with other words like snobby, artsy, snooty, or arrogant, but I think a lot of people don't really have a strong functioning definition of pretentious. So let's start off with a strong functioning definition of pretentious before we get his. So we're going to do the YouTuber thing and do the Google definition first. It comes from Oxford Languages. Attempting to impress by affecting greater importance, talent, culture, etc. than is actually possessed. And to not do the YouTuber thing, here's another dictionary. Merriam-Webster says, characterized by pretension, such as making usually unjustified or excessive claims as of value or standing, expressive of affected, unwarranted, or exaggerated importance worth of stature. And as a bonus, here's how I use the word pretentious if I use it, which is not often. I consider it to be mostly about self-awareness. I think pretentiousness is usually around inflating your intelligence, your skill, or your importance. That's pretty much what it is. And I don't think that it's something people do necessarily on purpose. So with that, let's get back to what Horses says pretentiousness is. When something or someone is pretentious, they are attempting to be something that often they are not. Fine dining is labeled pretentious because the chef thinks he's creating something more than food. Movies are pretentious because the director or the audience thinks they are part of something that is bigger than just a movie. Wrong. When an incredibly good chef treats food like it's incredible, it makes sense. When an incredibly good film director talks about their movie like it's more than a movie, it makes sense. These things aren't pretentious unless they're perceived as not as good as they think they are. This might seem like an innocent enough critique, but in labeling something pretentious, you run into a lot of problems. You divide people, you discourage creativity, and you even do yourself a great disservice. Sometimes by calling something pretentious, you yourself are engaging in pretension. So wait a second. Uh, is pretentiousness good or bad? Like, when you call something pretentious, if that's pretentious, is it good or bad to call things pretentious? Above all that, being pretentious is usually a good thing. It's literally the fuel that pushes our society forward. Everything you love exists because of pretension. But you just said that calling people pretentious is pretentious. I mean, you're running up against the same problem that Plato does with the allegory of the cave. So Plato says that to the average person, the hoi polloi, reality is actually just shadows that are projected on a wall by the people in control. Our real world is actually a projection. But the world of the forms, literally what is imaginary, is the real world, which he demonstrates by having the person in the cave escape and see the real world. If our world is just an illusion, how is it a reliable reference for something more real? That loop of logic is present here as well. He's calling, calling things pretentious, pretentious as though that is bad when he is making an argument that pretension is good. The idea of pretension often boils down to a perceived lack of authenticity. Wrong. Pretentiousness is not about authenticity. Not at all. Usually, the people who are being pretentious are doing it because of a lack of self-awareness. Again, if the chef or the filmmaker are making incredible films and they regard their films as incredible, it doesn't matter. But the not-so-great filmmaker that we call pretentious generally doesn't get that what they're doing isn't as good as they think it is. It's not about liking something. Pretentious people just pretend to like things to impress other people. Now, that's not untrue. But that's also not pretentiousness. When I see some piece of art that I consider pretentious and I see people liking it, I don't think, oh, these fakers, they don't really like this. Generally, I think, wow, I really disagree with these people who like this thing. Well, the fact is, we are all inauthentic by that standard. We all wear masks every day. I mean, if you want to be kind of annoying, to be a person is to wear a mask. The word comes from the Greek word persona, which means a mask. Dude, this is crazy pretentious. <laughs> I don't know if this guy's doing this on purpose, but he creates this liberal guilt loop and then feeds into it. Like, we're living in a society where if you just hold people to this certain standard, then, like, none of us are authentic, man. 
We are all constantly adjusting our personalities to suit other people. That's just life. So what grounds do we have to admonish other people for allegedly doing the same? He's basically admonishing people for admonishing people for not doing a thing that he says everybody's doing because he's probably done it. And if they've got that liberal guilt thing going, he accounts for it and subsumes them into this paradigm because they'll attribute that feeling to the fact that they are wrong. But beyond that, there's the question of policing authenticity. Who are you to say that someone else does or doesn't really like something? And that is actually something that's important. I think that it's probably the best point he's trying to make. However, I don't really think that's what pretentiousness is. In a while, he gets into class, which points for actually talking about class, sir. But he uses class to reinforce this incorrect assertion that calling somebody pretentious is saying that they are inauthentic in what they like. When a pretentious person likes a pretentious thing, it's not because they're being inauthentic. In fact, I would usually say that pretentiousness is pretty genuine. Not only the dictionary definition of pretentiousness, but also the thing that people call pretentiousness is usually not inauthentic. It's just an inflated sense of self-worth or the worth of the thing that you like and therefore self-worth. And it's certainly not bad to value yourself. That's absolutely not what I'm saying here. The inflated sense of self-worth comes from thinking that you have more of whatever trait that you value than you do. Like, I am a smart person, okay? I possess a pretty fair amount of intelligence, but I'm also aware of the limits. Oh, Peter endorsing limits. No, but not that kind of limit. It's not that my intelligence is a finite resource. It's that I am a human being with flaws. In recognizing those flaws and limits, I also recognize how I can become better and I keep actively trying to do that specifically. I'm willing to bet that nobody would call anything that I just said, and the reason for that is the thing that I just said entirely addresses what pretentiousness is. Now, if I said, without a lick of humor, that I'm the smartest person in the goddamn world, you would say, shut up, you pretentious moron. It's really not about authenticity, though. In the 1980s, New York hip-hop artists in basements and at block parties began sampling the music of German conservatory-educated band Kraftwerk. Was their interest in this German music somehow inauthentic? Were they just being pretentious? Was anybody at all calling hip-hop pretentious? No, they were denigrating it as a lesser art form. They were calling it shit, lesser, not good, not music. This is a terrible example because the actual way people acted was nothing like the problem he's describing. So if we can set aside the amorphous blob of authenticity, the first problem with labeling things as pretentious is one of policing taste and even more insidiously class. Class, you say? Oh, do continue, sir. For starters, if people like things that you don't like or understand, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't get to tell other people what they're allowed to like. You don't get to tell me what I'm allowed to tell people. But certain things, art, food, some movies, have an association with an elite class. When so-called regular people enjoy these things or claim to be interested in them, those people are often labeled as pretentious. See, he's really done quite a dance here. In saying this, in acting as though fine dining, fine art, these things that can actually be good are things of the elite class. In setting the situation up this way, this man is endorsing elite culture and promoting our consumption, enjoyment, and aspiration towards as uncritically good. The conversation of pretense serves as a way to keep people within the cultural bounds of their class. You can only enjoy what your class status says you can enjoy. He's only saying that people should be allowed to rise above their station. And that appears to be a sort of rejection of platonic elitism, the idea that a just world is when all are in their place. But he's not actually making an argument for class mobility. He's making an argument for the lower class to enjoy the things associated with the higher class. 
This is what happens when you don't define class by material relationship to means of production. You don't have a basis for what class is. It's just culture and art and stuff. Like, at most, it's a quantitative measurement of wealth. But the only thing stopping you from being in the upper class is just attaining a bunch of wealth. And, well, let's not talk about that. If you attempt to rise from that set of interests, people use the blunt stick of pretension to beat you down into submission. So that's not entirely false. That is a dynamic that happens. But the bourgeoisie are not generally calling the proletariat pretentious. It's usually the proletariat calling the bourgeoisie pretentious. 99.9% .9 of pretentious accusations are aimed upward. The 0.01% of them that actually fit into the dynamic you're describing here, sir, are so statistically insignificant that it is pretentious to act like you have identified the real problem. And indeed, being pretentious usually isn't harmful, but calling people pretentious most always is. Holy shit, I hate the liberal conception of harm. I hate it. It's so stupid. If somebody makes or likes a piece of art that I consider pretentious, you know what me calling them pretentious does? Jack shit. Even if I were an individual with a hundred times the influence I currently have, it wouldn't matter. I don't get to choose what it's promoted. And oftentimes the stuff that is chosen to be promoted is pretentious horseshit. It has the backing of the ruling class, and therefore calling it pretentious is something that a lot of people are going to do. For one, you're simultaneously being condescending and being self-loathing. When you call someone's enjoyment of a topic pretentious, you're basically saying, you're too dumb to understand this thing. But you're also admitting that you yourself don't understand the thing. So in turn, you would also be too dumb to get it. I, I, uh, I am too dumb to understand what you're saying here. But I want to quickly say that that doesn't mean what you're saying here is smart. It means I don't understand how the hell you got to that point. Calling somebody pretentious for liking something is always about the thing. It's not about whether they understand the thing. If I call something pretentious, it's because I think that it has an inflated sense of self-importance. And that's it. You see, when you use the word pretentious to cut down other people's efforts, you are making the world a worse place. You see, children, when you use the word pretentious, you're making the world a worse place, okay? A fucking after school special ass bullshit statement that is. The more you know. See, this is why just saying the word class doesn't actually help the analysis. It sounds nice, but this person thinks that you have the ability to change the world as an individual, which there is no regular everyday person with a normal job or station in society that goes around calling people pretentious and it has the kind of power he's assigning to it. In this guy's mind, demand straightforwardly drives supply. Yes, that's right, I'm calling it market fetishization, because that is what ultimately drives the individualism at play in this type of a critique. In reality, without pretension, society would look a lot more like this. That's because everything, even the most seemingly unpretentious things, were born from pretension. Um. No, that's not true at all. That's just another form of idealism. You're just arguing for manifestation. Creativity is a remixing of inputs. This is a large amount of why I have spent so much time on the plagiarism issue. It's because it's ultimately a myopic view of creativity. In these people's minds, creativity is about uh, an incredible individual reaching into the ether in a way only they can and plucking something wholly unique from it. It is not that. A human being's creativity is their knowledge, the works they have brought in, the art, the movies, the text, all of that stuff, and the never-ending barrage of sensory information, memories, feelings, etc., all of that stuff in here, constantly turning over in a cement mixer and being plopped out from time to time. History is dialectic. It occurs on a conflict basis. Contradiction occurs, and all of the dynamic human beings involved act. They turn that little spout on the cement mixer and pour it out. That is not pretentiousness. That is connectedness.
everything, even the most seemingly unpretentious things, were born from pretension. In the early 2000s, pretentious studio heads in Hollywood decided it was time to push the limits of comic books and created the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Do you remember anybody calling Iron Man pretentious? I uh, don't. Also, wow, what an achievement the MCU is. A man named Adolphus Bush was pretentious enough to reimagine the American beer market in the 1800s. He pushed to redefine his business, his product, and his whole industry, resulting in Budweiser. Isn't Budweiser beer an amazing societal development? It sure did progress things for everyone, didn't it? Hey look, the debilitating disease of alcoholism is on the rise. That's social progress! Even further back, a pretentious Neanderthal one day decided to leave his cave and actually build a house. Shut the fuck up! Again, society didn't happen because somebody decided to do it. Through conflict, it became obvious that a cave was not an ideal dwelling. And thus, in a dialectic with nature, humans eventually found various things that they were able to replicate, emulate, iterate on, and eventually turn into what we call a house, a dwelling, a built structure in which they live in. It wasn't because somebody said, you know, I just, I think I'm too good for this cave, you know? Shut the fuck up. You see, whether you're talking about Budweiser, Apple Computer, Marvel movies, Picasso paintings, or even the houses we live in, pretension is the fuel that pushes humanity forward. All progress in all things is the result of someone's pretension. Pretension to redefine their chosen medium and strive to create something entirely new. Without pretension, there is no ambition. We are all suddenly cavemen living in huts. So how can we redefine pretension? I think you've done enough redefining of pretension for one day, sir. First off, the thing you're talking about is not pretentiousness. Second off, the thing you're talking about is not the driver of history. Third off, you are incredibly fucking pretentious. This is idealism and individualism wrapped up in the language of class consciousness. But this guy is not class conscious. He does not recognize the ruling class as in conflict with the proletariat. He sees pretentiousness as a label that is used to stop class mobility. So in a way, he is advocating for class collaboration as well. No, pretentiousness is about exaggerating skill, intelligence, or importance. Pretentiousness is not ambition. Again, we did not manifest human society. Idealism, the idea that what is in our brain is more real than what is in front of us, and the creation of the world follows that which is inside our minds, is horseshit, which is why the name of the channel probably fairly appropriate. I think that's all I've got for you today. Um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, maybe become a patron. Um, I appreciate all of you, all of your time. I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye.